Rowe here. Uh, so tonight we have Satish Chakravarti. If I got probably not correct, but you're very generous in pretending that I am. Uh, he's a freelance software developer, teacher, inspiring actor, living in India. He's been writing code, teaching about programming since 1997. So he teaches all the video courses for Wintelec now, and it's on his way to the plural site course. There's a a plural site prize here that he can give away to you if you're particularly insightful during the evening. And, oh no, here we go. Uh, and he's visiting Calgary at the moment and interested in helping clients in Calgary. So if you have a project or a company needs help with an application architecture, feel free to reach out to him after the session. Tonight we're going to be learning more about uh, Unity IOC container. So I'll see you no more. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for joining me today. It's a weekday and I know all of you must be tired, so. Now, Unity is a piece of software from Microsoft that does two things. Dependency injection and interception, which is basically injecting aspects into your code. It's injecting cross-cutting concerns as aspects into your code. We are only going to discuss the dependency injection features of Unity today. So my goal today is to explore the Unity Containers dependency injection features only. And I'm going to try to make an attempt that whatever I say appeals just as much to, know, to those who know nothing about dependency injection as to those who do. Let's say you want to make a cup of coffee. To make a cup of coffee, you need a coffee maker. The coffee maker is going to need you to put in some water and some coffee. The code for that might look something like this. You have a coffee maker class. The coffee maker class needs water and some ground coffee. And there's a method called make black coffee that uses the water and the ground coffee to make some black coffee and returns the black coffee. To the untrained mind, this code might look like there's nothing wrong with it. And at some level, that is true. To be honest, this does the job. So there's nothing wrong with this code. However, this code is in violation of many of the principles of sound object-oriented design. Let's go over them one by one. Whenever we write code, our endeavor must be to model our objects as close as possible to their real world representations. The first thing that's wrong with this code is that this coffee maker looks nothing like a real world coffee maker. Because coffee makers don't make water. This coffee maker is materializing, it's creating water. That's the first thing that's wrong with this code. The second thing, and the same thing, it doesn't make ground coffee. There's no coffee maker in the world that, that creates ground coffee. Another thing is that most coffee makers in the real world accept different kinds of coffee powders, or there could be different kinds of coffee makers that accept different kinds of coffee powders. Some accept filtered coffee, some ground coffee, and some instant coffee. And maybe there is a coffee maker somewhere in the world that accepts the coffee bean and grinds it and has a grinder inside it that powers the coffee and then makes coffee out of it. Also, you can put any liquid into a coffee maker, not just water. There's nothing stopping you from putting milk. Some people like to have coffee with cream. And, and there's nothing stopping you from putting cream or milk into a coffee maker. This coffee maker doesn't allow for that behavior. Another thing that you will notice is that there is a tight coupling between the dependencies of the coffee maker with the coffee maker itself. I'm going to introduce two terms here. The coffee maker here is called a dependent object and the things that it needs, the water and the ground coffee, are called the dependencies. Over here, the coffee maker is tightly coupled to the dependencies. Which means, ideally, you would want to have water coming from the outside, 
which is what you do with the real world coffee maker. You put water from the outside, you put coffee powder from the outside. Whereas if you wanted, this code doesn't allow you to do that. If you wanted to share the coffee maker class with someone, you would have to share the water class and the ground coffee class with them as well. This code is just not unit testable. I couldn't test just the heating element to see if I put in just water and not the coffee, is it going to heat the water? I cannot test a particular unit of this coffee maker because I'm not the one providing the water and the coffee from the outside. This coffee maker is manufacturing water and coffee. This code violates a known principle called the single responsibility principle. And that principle simply states that everything in your code must do just one and only one thing. And by thing, I mean a class or a method you write should just focus on one job. And the job for this coffee maker is really just to make coffee. Let's look at why it is in violation of the single responsibility principle. What are the responsibilities that this class currently has? <coughs> One, it is constructing objects. It is newing up an instance of the water class and the ground coffee class, which is not the responsibility this coffee maker should have. It is also inadvertently coupling the lifetime of the coffee maker itself with the lifetime of its dependencies, which means when the garbage collector sees that there's an instance of the coffee maker that is no longer in use, it's going to collect the coffee maker instance, and at the same time, it's going to collect the water and the coffee powder instances as well. You may want that sometimes. You may not want that. Sometimes you want your dependencies to outlive the dependent object. Maybe there are shared dependencies that you want to pass around different coffee makers. 